Okay, Tachiwaza, Kiyotsuke, hey. Okay, uh, we're going to be doing gun and rifle defenses today, this morning until noon. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to start. Um, we're using these spiffy rubber handguns. Uh, in terms of safety, doing any techniques, please do not put your tr index finger inside the uh, inside the guard okay because if a person does a technique uh, and they do it too fast uh, you'll only be able to count to, to nine okay <laughs> um, second thing in terms of safety please please keep hold of the gun when the technique is done I don't want to see the gun flying off in any direction okay these things are rubber but if they hit you in the head you will know about it and then you will only be able to count till eight. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, th third item: don't, don't ever throw a gun away when you're done with it. Okay, we had that done once in a tournament years ago. A person was using a real, we were using a real handgun, and one of the black belts threw the gun away across the gym floor, and the owner of the gun was really ticked off okay because not only if it if it's loaded not only can it fire if it hits the ground properly but if it doesn't fire it can damage the weapon okay so you know we think these are you know god the sucker weighs 23 pounds you know guns are not light um, it weighs 23 pounds how can it hurt get damaged well you got all that force hitting the ground you know something has to give some place of time so please never throw a gun never never throw a weapon period knife you could throw it it might go off and stab someone else uh, four always assume a gun is loaded okay it there, there's a really high ratio of guns that are <coughs> used by inappropriately trained users to put it nicely and they they have a high malfunction rate all the way from you know it doesn't work period to there's nothing in it or it's the wrong caliber bullet okay it does happen but you assume it is loaded okay and all it takes is one bullet to send you off somewhere and now you can only count to seven okay which is the days of the week anyway so uh, keep those in mind those three or four things in mind okay one thing I want to deal with at the beginning and because this came up from from Barry last year when you did your presentation and I need let me borrow Paul here I haven't seen Paul for a long time the last time I saw Paul he was in his pickup truck outside the post office uh, well no you were on uh, Mc, I think it was, you were on McBean okay you're next to me and you do you honked or I honked hey, hey Paul well, like two months ago when here? Here? Okay. Oh, maybe it was three. Maybe Okay. Okay. <laughs> when you get old, your memory. <laughs> okay. Now, a couple things, and, and you don't have to stay there. You, if you want, you can get up close here. I want, I want his trigger finger in, no, I want his, okay, I'm sorry, I want his trigger finger in, on, in, in uh, inside on the trigger finger. I want, because you may not be able to see this, so if you want to come in closer, that's okay. One of the things that <coughs> Barry mentioned, was that if you block the weapon from the inside, okay, or you block it from the outside, and you take it across, okay, there is a t greater tendency that the weapon will fire because if his finger is bent and you're pushing it against it, it has a greater tendency to fire just by n human anatomy. And on the other hand, if you wind it out, it has a lesser tendency to fire because you're actually taking it away from the part of the finger that bends okay so these are just a couple things to be aware of okay and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you can't do a technique from the outside and take it across but when you do that and we're not dealing with any particular techniques you cannot just grab the barrel and turn it okay you have to grab higher up you have to grab the weapon because you're you, if you're doing it from the outside or the inside, you want to be able to control that trigger finger as much as possible. Okay, 
And they also the other reason you're grabbing down here is and you you grab if you're grabbing a handgun, okay, particularly an automatic handgun, okay, semi-automatic, you need to grab it like your life depended upon it. Because you need to keep if he if it fires, it does. If it fires, you need to keep the I keep forgetting this term. Slide. The slide you need to keep the slide from moving forward. Okay? If you can prevent it from moving forward, the gun jams, it's useless. Okay? If you don't grab it like your life depended upon it, it will fire, it will try to eject the shell, the eject, shell may eject, it may not eject. You are going to get some great burns and possibly some permanent damage on the inside of your hand. Okay? And then you won't be able to do any other techniques with this hand. Okay? So if you're going, if you, uh, with a revolver, it's a little easier, okay? It's easier to top, stop the um, cylinder. cylinder from rotating. It's easier to just stick your hand in there, and I've had it done to me once, and it hurts like, okay? And the firing pin hits your little finger. You get a black and blue mark that lasts for weeks, okay? <laughs> okay? But it prevents the weapon from firing, okay? but it hurts like hell, okay? If you can prevent the cylinder from rotating, it won't fire, okay? Uh, with a revolver, I always say go for the firing pin. You'll survive, it's gonna hurt. You know ahead of time it's gonna hurt a lot. You kind of can accept that and move on with life, okay? But with an automatic handgun or semi-automatic, you have to grab down here because this is your best bet at stopping the slide from advancing and jamming the weapon, okay? And once you take the weapon away from the person, t give me the, well, that's good move, okay. Once you take it away, you don't just aim it at the person, you chamber, chamber, chamber it to make sure if, you know, either, if there isn't a bullet in there, yeah, if there isn't a bullet in there, there's going to be one now, if there was a bullet in there, you might be able to get the shell to come out, you know, if, if, it, if, if it didn't fire, okay? And now, then now you've got a usable weapon, okay? You always do that because there's no sense pointing a weapon at a person if you don't know if it's going to work or not, okay? And if he knows there's no bullet, he knows there's no bullets in it, he's not going to worry about it anyway. Okay, so, okay, keeping those things in mind. Okay, we're going to we're going to start out. Okay, he has got to be close enough so that you can get to him. This is the same thing whether it be a handgun, whether it be a rifle, okay, any kind of weapon. You've got to be close enough so that you can easily get the weapon. If you have to reach, you are dead. Okay, you've got to be close enough. A good. A good, per, a good perp, a good bad person who you're trying to help because he is in financial need. Okay. <laughs> and he can't get a loan at ready cash. Okay. Okay. Um, I lost my thought pattern. You need to help him. And the only help, way to help him is to get close enough to him. Okay. And you want to be close enough so that this is all you have to do. Okay, if you have to reach, you are in trouble. If he is smart, he will not let you get this close. If he was smart, he would have gotten to be able to get his money from ready loan because he's got a job. It's okay, but moving on along. Okay, we're going to have you in this position and you want both hands about chest height. Okay, um, you want to give him a distraction. Okay, distraction was. Did you pick up? Your arms up when you were looking the other way. I was looking the other way. What else was I doing? But what did anything, did anything catch your eye? The other hand came up. The other hand, the finger moved. Okay. Once you do, you have to immediately move. I've turned my body, okay? And I've turned the weapon away a little bit, okay? All I have to do, I don't have to turn this weapon clear over here. Might hit his friend. Okay, all I have to do is turn it 
offline to me. Okay? If I have a friend over here, I sure hope they get out of the way. <laughs> okay? Because your concern, your concern is protecting your life. If the weapon fires, he's the one that's going to be at fault. Okay? I mean, it's a sick way of looking at things, but the, what's the alternative? The alternative is that you can give him your money, he might shoot you anyway. So, what, you know, what have you gained? Okay? And, and okay, so you're here. <coughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> works. Uh, okay? Now, from here, one we've shown before is all I want you to do is you're going to take this and bend this. His finger's not in there, but if we put the finger in here, you're just going to take this down to here, okay? And you're going to step back, okay? Oh, that crack. Okay. And, and you're going to do this really fast, rotating the gun downward, okay? It should help him count to nine, okay? All this technique is going to do is break his finger. May take him down, but it's going to break his finger and you have the weapon. Okay, my recommendation, okay, before you step back and get in a position where you are holding, you know, slide, ah, what's the term? Um, well, what's the slide? You're the, the, the slide. Okay, before you do that, because now this makes you look the, like the attacker. Okay. If you've taken this away from him, okay, he's here. Damn your shoelaces untied. Uh, <laughs> um, if you've taken this away from him, and my my recommendation is to come back and bring it back in and smash him across the face with it. Okay, you're not using it as a deadly weapon. But if he is able to run away, he will have the imprint of the weapon in the side of his face, and he's going to be easy to identify. Plus, you have his DNA. Pardon? Broken finger and put on the side. Right, right. Now, don't go hit him a second time because that's excessive force. <laughs> I hate, I hate to be that way, you know, but that's excessive force. And besides, if you come back, you know, you're only going to hit him with this, and that could do some real damage. Okay, you don't want to be responsible for putting his eye out or you know, or something very serious. This is a large area impact. This is going to hurt like hell, but it's not going to. It might get a concussion out of it, but you know that's okay. Okay, so I want you to try this a few times. Take the weapon away, then step in and go for go for the side of his face. Okay, don't do this. This does nothing. He can see this coming. This is coming in low. He can't see it until it gets him. Okay. Then you can step back, rack the slide, and say, stay down, or I'll blow your, and then you can add the F word in there, okay? <laughs> it might get his attention, okay? Right. Or, or as, as someone, someone I know back east who was walking home one night after a show, and, and he, he carries a, a weapon, because I guess you can do that in what, Virginia. Yes. Okay. He took the person down. Go down. He, he got him down. Took the weapon away. Had him on the back of his net head. Move over. And we were had a nice phone conversation. And he had the net gun in his right in his neck and said, "You move your. F <laughs> I'll blow your head off." He said, "The police came and they came and they arrested him. You know, everything was cool, but." Uh, <clears throat> You know, I, I don't advocate getting close to a person. You're, ju you're just asking for trouble. And that's his friend's name. Okay, so uh, we have enough handguns for every, well, for half of you, and the other half will be defending yourselves. Uh, <laughs> Mate, okay. this has nothing to do, yeah, this has nothing to do with the gun defense, okay, and I have this. I constantly have to remind my students, okay, learning is a process that benefits from repetition, okay. If you're learning a technique and you, you do it, then you let your partner do it, then you do it, then you let your partner do it, and you go back and forth, your retention is not going to work as well as if you do it four or five times and then let your partner do it four or five times. 
you've got to get the pattern down the same as what you're doing did before you have to do it enough so it becomes repetitive automatic you don't think about it okay and you can't do that by switching back and forth okay I know it's the nice way of being equal and friendly and all that other stuff but you gotta beat up your uke before they beat you up okay okay so don't switch back and forth okay uh, no let me let me borrow Vince here because he's vicious. Okay, couple things. Um, when you are dealing with a person who is attacking you, fist grab. Okay, if you're dealing with a knife or sword or a club, uh, you have to control the person. Okay. You would control, and you do that by controlling their extremity. You, you deflect or block the extremity, you get it out of the way, you grab it, what have you. Okay. If you are dealing with a handgun, you have to control the weapon, not the person. Because all it takes to activate that weapon is, okay, and unless you control this, okay, you are this. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you you got to control this, okay? And the only way you can control this is by controlling the weapon. So don't don't come in and go like this, because it isn't going to work. Okay? Because now you're in a struggle, and there's a better chance that some, you're going to get shot. Okay? So you have to always no if ands or buts. You always go for the weapon. Okay? We're going to do two hand, do grabbing with two hands too. There are certain situations where you can do that, okay? Um, but you usually want to get the weapon off to you one side or the other. The other part is you're standing here, and, and again, some of you are standing straight across, which gives him a really big target, okay? What? Oh, he was just doing a little sign of the cross. Oh, that too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that won't help. Okay. <laughs> okay. And if you're in your ready position, now you've given him a smaller target. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, there's a better chance that if he shoots you in this angle that he's going to hit something more vital because it's all kind of lined up diagonally rather than, you know, you can, there are places you can get shot around here where it's not immediately fatal. Mm -hmm. Okay. You stand this way, you're, done. You're, you're in a worse situation. But, it's easier to get the weapon out of your body range. Okay. The other thing is that if you're this way, you now can move your body. Okay. By simply moving your foot. And we. One of the things that again that that uh, Harold mentioned as as doing this sliding is you notice he he said I'm not stepping. I'm sliding my feet. Okay. If you've had any judo, it's you you step. You're stupid. They start with the same two letters. Now you can only count to six. Anyway, <laughs> okay. But you always slide your feet. Okay. You slide your feet. It helps keep you level. Okay. But it's the fastest way to move your body. You've got to get your body out of the way of any weapon. Okay. The hands help by deflecting whatever they're doing, but you've got to get your body out of the way. Okay, and that's the advantage of this position. If I stand this way, okay, there's still he has a greater range left. If, if he's paying, you know, he can fire, and I have a greater chance of being hit. May not be an area vital, but I'm going to go down anyway, and it's ruined my clothing. Okay, so you're here. Okay, we've done we we've we, we've done this one, and you again, you've got to get whatever the direction <coughs> you're. Just, Directing the weapon, that's the direction you should be looking. Because from yesterday, it's, what are the magic words? You look where you were going. Okay? So, if, if, if I go this way, I can't be looking. Plus, I can't turn my body. Okay? And I can't do anything here. So, if you're going to go this way, okay, turn, and then we're going to bring it back, and... Again, some of you are pulling away. This is nice. You're being nice to your friend. 
but you want to help your friend because he's trying to help you but so but if you bring it down it's going to cause him to break his finger okay it's also going to deglove his finger okay which means when he goes to the emergency room they're going to say we're going to have to amputate your finger because we can't find all the skin that's now removed I had a teacher friend who had that happen to him when he was putting he was out backpacking and he put his backpack over on him and his finger got caught in the backpack and uh, the physics teacher so now he works in base nine but anyway <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, so we, we, we've done this one. Okay, this time we're going to come from the other direction, which mo more of you are going to be probably comfortable with. Okay, you're going to come this way. Okay, and again, I am grabbing as high in as I can, and in in, hopefully I'm controlling his finger. Okay, once you're here and you have this pointed away, there are now other things you can do. Okay, if you're Mark Tucker, you're going to come in and you're going to hit him a few times, okay, just to loosen him up, okay, whatever you want. But from here, once you're here, you can now come in, do a hand throw, and always you're controlling the weapon, keep it pointed away from you. It can still fire, it can still fire, it can still fire. Take him down with the weapon. Once he is down, take the weapon away. Don't worry about a submission or any of that crap. Okay, take the weapon away. Get a couple steps back. Slide, rack the slide, and say, stay there or I will blow your head off. And if you want, you can fire a shot about two feet above him as long as there's no one down range. <laughs> okay. So again, you're, all you're doing is a hand throw. Okay. So you're here, it's across, hit, hit, moving, I'm moving in. Notice my feet slicing. Okay, moving in, because you want your Y axis right here, putting all this stuff together. I'm in tight, I'm going to grab his hand, bring this up towards him. Okay, because they don't like their gun pointed at them. Okay, pivot back, do the technique, take the weapon away, rack the slide. Make my day make my day. That's a nicer language. That's a nicer language. Or you can say to him, don't go for the other gun. <laughs> okay, so you're doing a hand throw. Okay, very good. Okay, get your partner and be careful with the, with the handguns, please. Rubber bullets hurt. Let me borrow Mr. Peter Bell here, Sensei Peter Bell here, over here. Okay, now, a uh, couple things because there, there are a couple different ways you're going for hand throw and, and I want you to know they're both okay. Uh, if, if he comes in with, with his, okay, and I've come in and I've brought him back here and, 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 ah, oh, he's got two hands. Okay. It, it, it's okay, come in with two hands because we need to deal with two hands too. Two hands is a very secure position, okay, but you still have to go for the weapon, okay. Mm -hmm. You can use two hands. I don't care. Okay. So when, when he's here, okay, and you come in, now you've got to come in to loosen him up with something because you've got to break up the strength here. And, and if you want that to be a hit fine or you want to come in and knee him fine, put this foot down. You're set in for a really nice tight throw. You've got your Y axes lined up. Okay. Everything's good. Just, you're just going to go for one hand and, and, and if you can't, you're just going to turn. Keep the weapon away from you. Some people, when they get to this point, they get this turn and he's off balance. Some people are stepping forward going this way because what's going to happen is he wants to rebalance himself and his only way to rebalance himself is to do what? Step back. Okay, and so you want to help this person go back. So some people will go back and throw him back this way. Others will have him here and they set him up and they'll pivot that way. It doesn't matter. Okay. You can even step out. You know, there, there are different directions you can do it. We did that Thursday night with a shoulder lock. You, you've got a 180 degree range here to throw a person with a shoulder lock. Or anytime you're doing a, uh, a joint rotation outward, okay, you've got 180 degrees 
And if you're really good, you've got a 270 degrees <laughs> of rotation on, on the uh, possibility. Of yeah, uh, on the uh, on this. What do you call it? When, uh, plane. When you, on this plane. Yeah. Okay. So it really doesn't matter what direction you go. So whatever you're doing is fine as long as you get to this point. Okay. So I just wanted to mention that to you. Okay. We've got another. He's going to come up again. Okay. We're going to come around, and this time again we're grabbing the weapon, and we're going to. I I don't. Okay, my, my preference, have you stand this way, start over here, okay, we're going to start here, stand here, okay, we're going to block across, we're going to come across, we're going to bring him in, okay, now, this is a technique I don't particularly care for, because I, I personally I feel I'm getting too close to this person, I'm getting too friendly with him, okay, but some people like to trap up that arm, and they can come in and do an you know, gar, uh, excuse me, uh, osoto makikomi, okay, bring him down, hunky dory, okay. If you can get the person to here, and you can crank this up, and you can pull the weapon out, you're, you got it in your hand, you're going to come back, and really plant him in the side of the head with this thing, okay, before you do anything else. Okay. If you want to be nicer to him, you've got him here, bring it up right behind the shoulder. Just smash it down like your life depended on it. Okay? You need to give him something to remember that makes him easily identifiable. Okay? <laughs> okay. You're not going to break anything with this, probably. Okay? But it's going to hurt like hell. And it's going to leave a nice dent. Okay, and that's what you're after. Okay, this you have a greater chance of doing some serious injury. This will just leave. don't go for the backbone. Okay, I never advocate whatever you're defending yourself doing any technique. You never do anything to the backbone because if you damage a spinal column, you could be taking care of this guy for the rest of your life, regardless of the streets. You know, any kind of street situation. Okay, it's, it's a sad commentary. I mean, I know there. Smash. <laughs> okay. If you're going to do this, because you you know that's what you feel like doing, you want to go, poor poor Peter here. You want to go for the base of the trapezius down here, either side. Okay, base of the trapezius muscle. That's the largest muscle in your back. Go for the base. It's going to hurt like hell for a few days. It will immobilize his shoulder and arm. This just hurts too much to move. It's not. A, all you're doing is bruising the muscle base. Okay. Yeah, it's going to hurt, and that's what you're. You know, you'll go to the doctor and say, oh, and the doctor say you bruised your muscle. You know, here, here's a buffer, and it'll be nice in a few days. Okay, <laughs> put some heat on it, put some ice on it. Life goes on. Okay, and then I'll go to your jail cell because uh, <laughs> you can only count to four. Okay, so what I want, <laughs> what I want you to, he's going to come in again. You're going to take it across. You're going to take it around. Bring yourself in. Your goal is to take the weapon away and hit him. Hit him. Okay? If you want to, if you've got really big hands and it's a really small handgun, like, you know, maybe a 22 little baby or something, a derringer, a little smaller, and you want to come in and do a hand throw hunky dory. But I wouldn't waste my time with it. Because this or this should do the damage. Okay? So get your friend. Thank you, sir. Nice of you to volunteer. <coughs> okay, let me borrow Peter again. What did we learn yesterday? Everyone's doing it. Everyone's having this problem. Either you're talking your way through the technique, you're talking to the attacker, or not looking where you're, going. you're not looking. You're not looking where you're going. And where are you going? He's coming in. You take it across. You want to be looking where you're going. You know you've got the weapon. Look where you're going. Once you have it, bring it around. Look where you are going. Look where you are going. Okay? You know where his body is. You know how he, a human, he unless he's, um, uh, you know, I'm glad California is finally not stopping calling Ill illegal immigrants aliens. Okay? When I think of alien, I think of someone from a different planet. Okay? <laughs> okay? Pardon? 
<laughs> okay? So, you know, now they're just illegal immigrants, uh, which is probably a more accurate term because you could be an alien and be a legal immigrant. But <laughs> anyway, okay, you know how this human is built. Okay, you know where things are. You don't have to look at him to see if you're doing the technique correctly. You should be able to do it by feel. Okay. Okay. Now, if we had someone here named Mary, we could have Peter, Paul, and Mary. <laughs> now, something I mentioned right at the start, and some, some of you are messing up on. What did I say you have to you, absolute necessity with a handgun? Keep it in line with your body. With their body, maybe, but not yours. But what's uh, in order to do that, you have to. You have to control the gun. Okay. Whatever hand you you control the gun with, that's the hand that's going to do anything else with the weapon. Do not change hands. And what some of you are doing, let me borrow, I'll borrow <coughs> Barry here. Okay, you're coming in here. Oh God, damn! I had something horrible for lunch. Okay, now <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? You're coming in here and. As you come in, you need to step in and turn, okay? You take this weapon away. If he's still standing, hunky-dory, he's still standing, you come back, strike, it's all in the same, don't, put it back in your hand. Don't do this, take it out, let's see, I, I can't get there, okay? Because yeah. you can't. Your short arms. Okay, yeah. and even if I get out of the way, now I've now he's back in a balanced position and he can step away or do something else. Okay, whatever the hand hand controls the grabs the weapon, that's the one that stays with the weapon. Okay, a helping hand is a happy hand. Okay, so please, <laughs> both your contacts are still in. No. Borrow, poor, I'll use. Okay. A, let, Let's take this absent of the gun because what, what's happening is we're having a problem with the technique, not the gun. Okay. If, if he's coming in and he comes in for a hit, for example, and I'm coming across here to here, I can't just come in and go like this and then hopefully it's going to turn. Okay. What I have to do is as I come in here, I am rotating this down and around. Okay. It's a circle. And as he does the circle, what happens, he tends to bend over. I am coming in tight, and I bring this up slightly. Are, you, are your shoulder okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm not putting any pressure on. That's what you have to have. Because normally what we would do from here is we kick this leg up or kick both legs up, drop, go down, he goes splat. Okay? <laughs> okay? It's one of those techniques you really can't complete in jiu-jitsu. Because your uke will not be able we to do it once. We can do it once, okay, but it really makes the class go down in size real fast. Okay, with the weapon, okay, you're controlling the weapon, you're here, you've got it, again, it's a circle, okay? It's not twisting, it's a circle, wind it around. A person can't resist that wind as much as they can resist turning the wrist. He can fight that. Okay, he's fighting this. He can't fight he can't he can't fight that. Because what what and this goes back to uh, child and parent joints. Okay, in my various books. This is a child joint, this is a child joint, this is a parent joint. If he locks this up or I lock this up, what's the next joint to lock up? The elbow. If he tightens up his elbow, what's the next joint that locks up? His shoulder. If he locks, I'm just going to do this from here. Lock up your elbow, wrist, shoulder. If I turn this, see what happens? I don't have to do, except I'm going to shot someplace important, but <laughs> I don't want to be here. But he is actually turning himself because he's locked himself up. And I'm just cranking the wheel because I've got the leverage and torque. Okay. I'm, I'm sure you can come up with an Eastern definition that says the exact same thing in a different way, okay? So what you're doing, that's why you, it's a circle, okay? As, as you come in, and now you're here. Take the weapon away, 
Smash a little sucker. Okay? Get some good DNA on this weapon. Okay, DNA is the best evidence you got. It's better than a picture. Okay? Unless he's got a twin. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Try to do, try, I'm not worried as much about the gun as doing, try to do the technique correctly. Okay, Yame, Yame, Kirby's going to be picky again. Let me borrow Paul. Okay. Um, there are a couple of three things being done wrong on the Asoto Maki Komi. Not, not, you're, you're handling the gun fine, that's cool, okay? But I want you to do the rest of the technique properly because that's what makes the gun more easily accessible. When, when he comes in here, and this is a good angle, you're coming in, you're coming in fine, you're stepping, you're stepping in fine here, and then one of two things are happening. Either you're staying out here and leaning back, okay? Or you're getting in and you're leaning forward to do the technique, okay? And, and both of those are wrong, okay? When you come in, you come in, you bring this, you bring this nice big circle. You want to have, you want to have your back left side right in his armpit. That's where you want to be, because that's your pivot point. And then you lean back, okay? And if you lower, come in and you lower yourself as you do this, you're balanced and you've got, you, you're, you're in a good position. Okay, he's off balance, you're balanced, you take the weapon away. Okay, but it's, you've got, you've got to come in, you, because normally what you do with a soda, soda mark, you would come in around here, down, around, wham, you're down. And if you've got, you're down here, it's not going to work. If you're bending like this, you can't do this. Okay, sorry. Okay, so you've got to come in tight. It's a feel thing. It's a feel-good technique. If it feels good, it feels right, you'll go home tonight, and he can only count to three. Okay, <laughs> okay. try to do the technique correctly. The gun is important, but if you don't do the technique correctly, you still could be at the short end of the bullet. Okay. Something to be aware of, and, and I, it's probably true, in, or should be true in every martial art. I, I know it is in jiu-jitsu. If you're doing a technique and it feels comfortable, you are probably doing it correctly because your body is all lined up, everything's where it's supposed to be. Okay? If you're doing a technique and you, you feel like you're contorted, you're probably doing it wrong. And you need to get out of that contorted position. Okay? So that's something to be aware of. Um, let me borrow Janet. Janet and I probably go back more years than anyone here. Okay. Over <laughs> of, 40. Over 40 years. Okay. Very good. We need a handgun. Oh, well, okay. I can make I'm sorry. That. Okay. Now, it's really important. And I wanted to shoot okay. it for over 40 okay. years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. when, when, you're doing, when you're doing this technique and you've brought this person over here, okay, some of you are getting here and you say, and you wind this up and the person realizes everything is messed up, okay, and, and some of you are trying to pull the handgun this way, bad move, okay, or you're trying to twist it out, bad move. All you really have to do because of their alignment at this point, all you really have to do because you, you've let me get this. Okay, here. You're here. You've got the gun already. All you have to do is pull. That, and it's, it's just an extent. As you wind, okay, it's an extension of their their movement. You you wind. You're here. You pull. Okay, it works because they're worried about their arm being wound and they're going down. And you're, they're not worried about what's in their hand. Okay, but don't try and lift it out or twist it or anything. Just pull it right out. It comes out. Okay? God made it that way. Okay. That's what my chemistry teacher used to say. Instead of explaining how formulas would balance, he said, God made it that way. And we would sit... What? He would probably get in trouble for that now, but he was close to retirement. Okay. Okay. Ah, jeez. Your safety's on. <laughs> okay, now, if you're going to do it two-handed, okay, you want to make sure this weapon is high up pointed at you. You don't want it pointed at you down here, and you're going to do this down here because this keeps the weapon in line with you for a long time. 
too line, too long, okay? The other thing is a two-handed response is going to take more time than a one-handed response. It's easier for him to pick up as well, okay? Because now you, you've got all this coming at you. And she's too, get closer to me, please. If I'm going to be attacked, I want to be attacked properly, okay? <laughs> and besides that, <coughs> you've got six toes on one foot. Okay. Uh, okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm going for the weapon. I'm going for the wrist. I want to keep the wrist, keep the wrist. I want to try and freeze the wrist if I can. Okay. And the reason I'm trying to freeze the wrist, it's more of a distraction than anything else. I need to get the barrel of this weapon pointed up. Okay? And yes, the head is a small target and I could move sideways. And you could do any of the other techniques there, but we're trying to give you something different. Here, grab, I'm pointing this up. Okay, now, from this point, what direction do you probably want it to go? She wants to step back to regain control or something. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm not going to turn or anything like that. I'm going to move in to her and down and away. You know what happens next? I've got the weapon. I'm going to smash her across the face with it. Okay? I've got the hand. I can do a hand throw if I want, but that won't be necessary. Okay? Again, they're here. Here. Now, this time I stepped out of the way, which is fine. Okay? These two hands, I'm going to take it back and down. If, 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 if she pulls, if she doesn't pull back, I'm going to go back anyway. If she wants to pull back, that's her choice. It's still going to go back. Okay? And if she happens to want facial surgery at this point, that's her decision. Okay? It looks more like jaw reconstruction. Well, there may not be much that needs to be reconstructed. <laughs> okay? But again, it's here, and then hit with it, okay? If the weapon goes off, you won't have to do that, okay? But you didn't hold the weapon in a manner where your finger, your hand is on the uh, trigger. Okay, that's what's important. It was a struggle, and the gun went off, okay? Odds are, in any street confrontation, if you are trained properly, you will not remember what you did. Because it will be automatic. Motion! Okay? And you can kind of conjecture what you did and say, yeah, think about it. But you probably could not say without any, without any doubt, this is what I did. Okay? Because it's, it's an automatic movement on your part. Okay, so what I want you to do, they're going to come in, they're here, you know, bring the gun up. <coughs> what does your sweatshirt say? Now, if you're asking a question or making a statement, it's really important that you act before you finish your question or statement. Because by asking that question or making a statement, they're, tr they're paying attention to what you're saying. Okay, not what's going on. Okay. Or your zipper is down. Before you finish the word down, you've got to be in there with the weapon. Okay? Because once you, once, once you have finished the question, they can quickly come up with the answer or they're going to realize this is a distraction and you're, you're going to have a hole in you. Okay? So you, you've got to, you know, okay, you know what I'm talking about. So we're here, coming in. Oh, God damn, not again. It was earlier today. Uh, <laughs> okay? Come in, step in, take it away, and hit. Okay, side of the weapon. The grip, preferably. You know, you, you hit a person here, it could remotely damage, possibly, slight, re, slight remote chance of damaging the weapon. Hitting, hitting them with the, with the grip, it isn't going to damage the weapon. Okay, that's a strong part of the weapon, because that's the part you have to hold to fire the weapon. Okay, so I want you to try this. Very good. Have fun. Don't hurt. Okay. A uh, couple, couple more things on a handgun in, in terms of things you need to know. Um, you do not want to fire the weapon if you can avoid doing so at the person. Okay. Uh, if you hit them after you have disarmed them, 
you are going to be dealing, you're going to be on the short end of a, co of a court case, okay? Uh, even though they were the attacker, because now you have removed it. What the legality is, is that you have removed the threat to you, and now you are the threat to them, as sick as it may be. But you don't know that that's the only firearm. No, you don't. But you better hope like hell they have another one hidden on, on them, okay? Or you can plant one on them. No. Uh, <laughs> if they have one, that they have more. That won't fly very far. Not in California. Not in California. Another gun in their hand. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. Yeah. You have to see it in their hand. You have to see it in their hand. You have to. You have to, you have to give them a chance. Uh, <laughs> well, no. Okay. I knew there was a reason I didn't live here. Okay. Same thing goes for New York and a, f a few other states. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, that that's one item. Okay. Most handguns have a kickback. That doesn't mean you're getting money for it. It means that when you fire the weapon, it's going to come up. That's natural, okay? Uh, unless you have some of the uh, auto automatic weapons, and then their kickback is going to be at different angles depending on where the shells, the angle the shells eject from the chamber, uh, <laughs> and how well the gun manufacturer has compensated for that in the construction of the weapon, okay? Um, so my recommend, if if and, and this, come, this comes out of the UCSQ, University of California at San Quentin. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing what fantastic in-house training they have in prisons. I mean, it's, it's, that's one of the problems of prisons, is rather than, rather than aiming at the person high on the chest, okay, um, you're better off aiming low. Okay. See where he put his hand? <laughs> That's a natural reaction, by the way. Okay. The reason you aim low, okay, is because if he's going to try any type of movement, trying to get out of the way, his body has to go down before it moves in any direction. Okay. That's one reason. So that if you do end up having to fire because he's going to charge you, and now you maybe you have a reasonable reason to shoot him because now your life again is at risk, okay, as he goes down, you're going to hit him someplace in here. Okay? Never aim for the head. It's a small target. You know, if you hit it, life goes on, at least goes on for you. If you miss it, he still can come at you. Okay. The other reason is when the gun fires, it's going to come up a bit. Okay, so just because you aim here when you fire, it make even if it, even if it's just even if it's just a, a, a little you can control the weapon and it only comes up maybe an inch or two, the weapon is still going to fire uh, at a higher angle. So that's why you aim low. Okay, because that assures that you're going to hit him somewhere vital. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind if you have to fire, if you can keep your wits about you at the time. Okay, I was excited, I was upset, I didn't know what was going on. The fi the weapon fired. It's got a, you know, it's got a, uh, what do you call it? a uh, hair, trigger. hair trigger. You know, you, you can you can come up with all sorts of. It's not my weapon. Anymore. It's not my weapon. It wasn't familiar with it. I mean, there are all sorts of things you can use that may or may not work. Make sure you ask for a jury trial. <laughs> okay, that is, you know, I always told my students, if, you, if you're going in for a serious crime, make sure you've got a jury trial. Make sure you have a good attorney. Yes, you're supposed to have a fair trial in the U.S., but a good attorney really helps. Because what a good attorney will really do, especially if you have money, is they will run the trial ahead of time. They will, they will get a set of perspective. They will, they will set up their own courtroom. They'll go through the whole thing. They'll have the jurors almost the same as the p potential jury pool. <coughs> they will run it. They'll go through it. And the, the jurors then say what, what their weak and strong points are. And so that when they go to court, they are prepared. 
The best defense is a good offense. Attorney, yes. An attorney will tell you the best defense is a good offense. Okay. <laughs> okay. And and that's it's it's a really sad commentary on, on the American justice system. Because in, in my book, it's questionable as to whether that's fair or not. Okay? Okay. And juries always can, always can uh, allow intent to come into play. Right, right, right. And you always have to do is all, all your attorney has to do is establish reasonable doubt in the mind of one juror. And you have won. Okay, they have to, if there's a reasonable doubt in the mind of one juror, they have to find you not guilty. That's a criminal trial. Civil trial is different. Okay. Ah, before you, okay. We're going to have a uh, gun to the side of the head. This is not cool. Okay. Especially if he can see out the other ear. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. You're here. Again, the hands are here. Okay. You're not going to be able to get to the weapon directly. That's the downside. If it's in front, it's easy. To the side, you've got to do something. So, what you have to do... <coughs> can I take my glasses off? Okay, you've got to deflect it out to the side. And you've got to step in so you're out of range. Okay, from here, this hand is going to clamp over. Okay, and then you can do whatever you want from here. You can come around, do this thing again. You can come around, do a hand throw. As awkward as it is. Okay. Uh, you can come in and knee him, whatever you want to loosen him up. But what, what has to happen is, he, he's here, get this up here, and you've got to turn. Don't try, don't try and step away, okay? That takes too much time. What you need to do is turn and step, okay? Turn into the weapon and step. If it fires, you're going to have a hearing loss for a certain length of time. Probably, it, you know, it could be some permanent hearing damage, but at least you're alive to talk about it, even though you can't hear yourself. No, but, <laughs> okay, once you have this and you've got to slide up and grab the wrist, if you just grab the arm, he's got movement. So you've got to slide up, trap the wrist as best you can. Then go for the weapon. Okay. Then you can either go this way or you can come in here. Okay. What I would do is I'd get this pointed at him as soon as possible. I would knee him, step down and in. Okay. You can do the hand throw. This time I took the weapon away because I felt him lose his grip. And again, smack him up the side of the head. Okay. So you, you have some options here, but you in this case, you've got to control the wrist. It's not absolutely mandatory, but it sure helps. Because then if you control the wrist, you, it's easier to control the weapon with your other hand. Okay, let's see what you do with this. Okay, have fun. Don't blow your heads off. Okay, let me borrow, borrow Justin here. Okay. Uh, I show this for a right person going to your right side. Okay. And, and uh, unfortunately, Justin, being a little more resourceful, did right-handed from the left side. Other side. And what I showed you over here isn't going to work over here because right hand, left side. Okay, and the hand doesn't turn you know both ways. So he's going to come in. Okay, just to show. You. And you've done the technique already. Okay. Again, if you, if you understand how to do the techniques from straight on, you have to realize that once you turn, you are straight on. Okay? Okay, you don't have to come up with a whole new... Okay, all you got to do is knock it out of the way, grab the weapon, bend it back, and you've done your thing, and except he broke the gun. Okay. <laughs> So now he gets to buy it for $700. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, I want to deal with the, with the back first because that's not nice. Okay. Because that's, that's the worst situation. And, and what's really bad, give me the gun here. Turn sideways. What's really bad. That was what I was talking about. 
Okay. Now, if the gun is pointed, is happens to be in your back. Okay, and we need to show this here. Okay, turn, just turn sideways. If it's on the left side, okay, you're going to turn. You're going to take a step back and rotate, turn to your left. Do that because that gets the gun off your body as range or the direction of the bullet off your body as fast as possible. If he were here and he turned the other way, see, I've, I've got all this opportunity to shoot him, okay, because he's turning, he's turning into the weapon, okay, so he has to turn away. If on the other hand it's on the right side, okay, you would turn which way? Now, to the right, okay, now, you have got to have a very aggressive block when you do this, okay, because he is in a very secure position. And a very aggressive block is enough to more quickly get the gun to point away from your body because it takes time to rotate your body, okay, and we only get one of those, okay. So we're here and it's, it's the same, it's the same, same block. You know your belt's tied wrong? Okay. Now it's going to be a block and it's going to bring it up. It's a crummy block. Okay. There's no way to go to really nice. But you've got to again go for the weapon. Okay. If you block, the other hand has to go for the weapon. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. Except the butt that's in his hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he's here. Okay. He's here. And you have to turn and block. And it's going to come up. Be aware of that. It's not going to stay down. And if he's smart and steps back right away, wrong foot. If he, <laughs> that was a wrong foot for him to step back with. Okay, because where was the gun? He's here. I did. Uh, he, he's in my back. Okay, he's in here. He stepped back with his. It's, before you step back with your right foot or left foot. He stepped. He stepped back with his. Okay. Before, okay, he stepped back with his left, step back with your left foot. Where's the gun? It's still in range. If he steps back with his right foot, uh, now, I'm not in, now I'm not in range. So make sure you tell him to step back with his left foot. <laughs> <laughs> you, okay, we do have band-aids. We also have an EMT here if you like a more extensive medical care. Okay. <laughs> He'll put you in an air cast, <laughs> your whole body. <laughs> you know what an air cast is. <laughs> you know what an air cast is? No. Oh, those are the neatest things. They use them for really serious injuries. But anyway, okay. <laughs> okay. I've seen one used once, and anyway, it's it's just amazing. What they are. Okay. You're here. You're gonna turn. Go for the weapon. You have to go for the weapon. Okay, here again, easiest now point it towards him, do a hand throw. If you can pull it out, because that's an extension of his momentum or his motion, because he may he may be wanting to pull it back, okay? He wants to pull it back, fine. Get the weapon away. Getting the weapon away is more important than doing the throw. Always. And then the same old thing. Hit him across the side of the face with a butt of the gum, gun, and then you can hit one butt with another butt. And now he only can count to two. Okay, very good. Let's try this a couple, three times a piece. We don't have much time before we break for lunch. Okay. Just one last thing. Okay, a couple last things. Let me borrow someone with a gun just to show. The, if, if this person comes in from behind, okay, when you're blocking from behind, this has got to be a very aggressive block. It's going to be a crummy block. Okay, it's going to be a crummy block, but if you do a little tight block, you're going to be, the, you need the weapon to get far enough away from you so you can grab it from this side rather than trying to reach around and grab it from the other side. Okay, so even though it's a crummy block, block as hard as you can because it moves the weapon far enough away from you so that you can grab it. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Okay, thank you. Okay, a couple of things in terms of your own personal safety.
if someone is going to rob you, you have a greater chance of survival if they use a gun. Because you tend to take it more seriously. There is a higher risk of injury if they're threatening you with a knife. And there's a much higher risk of injury if they don't have any weapon at all. Because you think you can defend yourself and they realize they have to use physical force against you. Okay, so those, those are the realities in terms of if you are confronted by a person who needs a secondary income. Um, your best bet is to give them their money, give them what they want. All of that can be replaced. If they want you to go somewhere, don't. Because they are trying to take you someplace where they can effectively end your life. Okay, if you have to run away from a person who has a handgun, do not run in a straight line, do not zigzag. Run in an arc. It's harder for them to track you if you're in an arc than if you're going, because if you're going back and forth, they just aim down the middle and when you get back in line, they fire. Okay, <laughs> okay. This, is, this is sick stuff, but you know, <laughs> that's where the real, real world works, okay. Um, you need to protect yourself. Okay, there is, and I'll take just a minute because uh, there's a teacher I knew who he came to school. Is that uh, when I was still teaching junior high, and he owned a bunch of apartments down in South LA someplace, and I guess someone decided they wanted his money after he collected the rent, and he was holding all these contracts, and he was holding all these papers. And he really got beat up and they got his money anyway. Okay, so when he came back to school a couple late weeks later with all these, he came and he says, what can I do to avoid this from happening in the future? And I said, give him the money. Six months later, he had a repeat incident and he held on to all his papers. And he spent a couple more weeks in the hospital and at home recovering. And when he came back to school, he asked me, what can I do and, and you know, I wanted to be nice to him, but I think I thought he needed a bit of reality at that point. And so I simply told him, "What did I tell you the first time?" He was not happy with me. Okay, I think he wanted sympathy. And I figured, you know, uh, I'm I'm kind of a sort of a believer, unless it's someone I you know really close to me, etc. You know, fool me once, shame. What's with it? Fool me once, shame on, you. shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Okay. He should have just dropped all his papers, given the guy the money, and he probably would have been okay, and he could have picked up his papers and life would have gone on. Okay. Okay. Do your best to cooperate. I'd sell the property. Warren? I'd sell the property. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's true too. Uh, cooperate to the best of your ability. Also, another thing is the longer you can engage the person in conversation, the less likely there is to be a physical confrontation, surprisingly. So if you're a good talker, you've got a better chance of getting out of it. Okay? Very good. I want you to have a good day. After lunch, we have uh, um, um, Sensei Dave Bellman, who's doing Applied Jiu-Jitsu Principles and Concepts. And then I'm either doing drag and pull counters not drag and pull, just drag and pull. Uh, or we're going to be playing with Jushin a little bit. I'll, I'll let you make a decision on that. Okay? Because I can go either way. Okay. Very good. Tachiwaza. Kiyotsuke. Okay. We'll be back.